Let's get it on. All right. Hello. Welcome back to another episode of the Bowl of the Line podcast. This is episode 129. I'm your host, Joe Landy Pavlon. Tonight, of course, I have my colleague, Justin Rivera, alongside for this podcast. And uh, Justin, so nice to yeah. have this uh, weekend in the books. A lot of racing to talk about. Um, yep. NASCAR, especially IndyCar, uh, endurance racing. And of course, we have some F1 to talk about later in the show. Um, this is going to be another great episode. So we're going to get started. Yeah. Well, what happened at Bristol Motor Speedway was absolutely classic. I think this was a classic case of NASCAR racing at Bristol. And I think while, while the racing, you know, of course, we don't have the race on the pavement anymore in the spring. They put the dirt track on uh, for that event starting this year. It sure really does show how many fans take Bristol two times a year for granted now that it's gone. And wow, Kyle Larson finally gets it done at Bristol Motor Speedway. He had to work hard for it. It wasn't easy. There were a lot of guys that had better cars than him throughout the race. 500 laps may sound long, but this race goes by in about two and a half hours to three hours long on average pace. Larson led um, at the end of stage two, winning stage two. He led 175 laps, started fifth. It's his 12th career win. You know what that means? Half of his NASCAR Cup Series wins are in Hendrick Motorsports for 2021. That's six wins this year. You multiply that by two, you have the other wins he had for Chip Ganassi racing in a span of five years. Yeah. Um, of course, Larson has done a phenomenal job, and I think it's his championship to lose. It just depends how the next few rounds follow. We said this last year with Kevin Harvick, and you know Harvick fell shy of executing um, and had things go the other way. Speaking of Kevin Harvick, he was the closest to victory all year. This was his race to lose. He had a great car, led what um, 71 laps, started in eighth, and it looked like we were going to finally see Harvick and Ronnie Childers break through in, the, in 2021 and get the win, but there are more than just obstacles to deal with on the track. Yeah. Kevin Harvick, uh, in the end, had the odds against him when the Hendrick Motorsports uh, rival Kyle Larson got up to him and had a better line in the closing laps, not to mention a lap car if Chase Elliott was playing unforgiving towards that end over some contact. We'll explain that of what happened and how everything transpired at Bristol Motor Speedway Saturday night. Ryan, or before Ryan Blaney, William Byron, Byron had to have a flawless race. He did just that. He makes it to the next round in this championship playoffs. Started in the 14th spot. It wasn't easy. Took a while for his car to get up to speed. And when it mattered, he brought it home in that third place spot. Danny has joined the podcast. Welcome, Danny, to the show. What's going on, everyone? It's good, man. Talking about Bristol and the yeah. cup race. Came here at a good time. Yeah. Fourth place, Ryan Blaney led 45 laps, started in the seventh spot. And Ryan Blaney could be the man that um, leads Team Penske to the furthest in this championship amongst the three drivers. All of Team Penske make it through this round. I didn't think that would be the case. It looked like Brad Keselowski was – um, just too far behind. But, you know, he managed to make ends meet in this race. We'll explain him in a minute. Fifth right. place, car 48. Now, he had an up-and-down day, but kept it on the lead lap. Alex Bowman never lost the lead lap, and it really mattered because his car was charged to the front towards the end, and Bowman brings it home in the top five. So, Hendrick Motorsports drivers, um, if it weren't for Chase Elliott's tire situation, we could have had a, a halt – all of Hendrick cars in the top five. They were that great on Saturday night. And that's what a championship team looks like. Sixth place went to Brad Keselowski. Like I said, it has been a struggling last several races for the Penske driver. And he has a lot of success at Bristol Motor Speedway. And Brad Keselowski's team found something in 
the car to get it working. He led 10 laps, started 10th, but likewise stayed on the lead lap. And, um, and honestly, I think that was enough for, for Brad to make it to the next round. No one was really safe other than the guys that clinched going into this race. And we'll explain that in a minute. Right. Martin Truex Jr. led five laps. He started first, but like I said, with the Metro qualifying system, you could be placed first, but that doesn't mean you're going to have the car to win. He only led five laps, but he did bring it home in the top 10. Martin Truex Jr., seventh place finish. Eighth place was my pick to win. Yes, that name was Eric Jones. I said Eric Jones because this is his best, one of his best tracks in the Xfinity series. And Eric Jones is a great short track racer, and he outperformed many times in the past in different levels of equipment in the past. And Eric Jones outperformed his Richard Petty Motorsports Chevrolet and brought it home in the top 10. He started 22nd, the highest non-playoff driver finisher in this race. Ninth place, Denny Hamlin. Hamlin had a good early race car, but it just didn't seem to translate towards the end. He let 65 laps one stage. One started second, but brought home in ninth. And Matt Benedetto in his final race for the Wood Brothers at Bristol, rounded it out yeah. on the top 10. Another driver who I expected to do no. very well. That wasn't yeah. in the championship contention. That was actually my pick for the win last week, Matt Benedetto. 11th place, Joey Logano. A lot of people had high expectations for him, but he did manage to make it through to the next round in this race. It wasn't a good race for Logano that you usually expect to see from him at Bristol. Tyler Reddick was the first driver to be eliminated from the playoffs. He finished 12th, but just fell short. And so did Eric Almarola, who finished 18th. It wasn't a big margin of them losing out in this playoffs. And I had a feeling that it was going to be like this with the round of 16 with a lot of these one-off winners like Eric Almarola like Michael McDowell, and even to an extent of Christopher Bell, who was actually on the right side of getting in. He got in to the next round. Kurt Busch. I, I didn't think it would be Kurt Busch we'd be talking about getting out of the first round because he had some really good tracks that, you know, have a good back, you know, a background resume. But more of his success from these past three tracks have been Kurt Busch's prime years. But he still shows that he has it in him to to, to succeed in the NASCAR Cup Series for this 2004 champion, a 19th place finish was not enough for Kurt Busch to remain um, in contention for this championship. He is out of the playoffs. Kurt Busch's brother Kyle was very dangerously close to missing out, as was his teammate Christopher Bell, but they both make it through. 21st and 29th, respectively, for the Gibbs drivers. 24th place, Michael McDowell, the Daytona 500 winner, Started 16th and um, had trouble staying on the lead lap, and that's the end of his championship hopes. A lot of people did expect McDowell to be a quick exit from the championship hunt. And Chase Elliott, luckily for him, he clinched a spot into the next round with all the bonus points he claimed in the regular season. It helped him in this situation. He led up 129 laps before that tire went down and brought his Chevrolet home in 25th. He started fourth in the race. So that leaves us with the round of 12. The round of 16 is in the books. As I mentioned, the drivers out of the round 16 are Tyler Reddick, Eric Almarola, Kurt Busch, and Michael McDowell. That leaves us with 12 drivers left in the next batch of three races. will determine our round of eight, which will then, of course, the three races in the round of eight will determine who will be competing in the final four race for the championship trophy. So, you know, the cup series, Drivers are going to have a lot more work to do. This round of 12 is not anywhere near easier than what we saw in the round of 16. In fact, a lot of people argue the round of 12 is tougher because the round of 12, we have three different kinds of racetracks, which lead to three different aero package and packages and three different kinds of racing, you know, racing styles that we're going to expect in these stock cars. And 12 drivers will be out there competing for uh, a championship. We're going to have racing for 400 miles at Las Vegas on Sunday. Then the Talladega 500, which, of course, is a classic race. And a lot of unpredictabilities in an event like that. And, of course, our only road course in the 10-race championship playoffs, the, the road course at the Charlotte Motor Speedway, will finish off the round of 12 and set the round of 8 and leave four drivers out of the championship. It's a tough round. Yeah. Especially Talladega being the biggest factor since, you know, if you're 
mostly in contention. If they say if you're a driver in contention and you get caught up in a big one, then you you definitely got to get shaken up. And let's say you have a bad race in Vegas and it translates over to Talladega and that wreck happens early and you get no stage points. And a you're outside the top 30. You're in grave danger of getting yeah, eliminated. In Charlotte, it's not going to be any easier because we're racing a road course. Last race, last year, <clears throat> the race started with wet conditions. And, of course, we're talking stock car racing here. That's still foreign for a lot of these drivers. You're yeah. racing under rain, uh, uh, on, a, on a rainy track on a road course. And, of course, we saw that Circuit of the Americas this year. We got to see a little bit of that in a Daytona on the road course. But is that really enough? No, they're still stock car drivers trying to compete for a championship here. So unless your name is Chase Elliott or Martin Truex Jr., this is not going to be an easy round for you. Yeah. And even then, we don't know what's coming. But what we do know is who's placed where. The seating is set. Kyle Larson. So to break this down for you, everybody in the round of 12 starts with 3,000 points. And then you add the number of bonus points that are in, that that you've earned um, at the start of this round, and that places you with how many points you have. So, th- three hundred five nine, th- thirty hundred and fifty nine points for Kyle Larson. He's first seed. Martin Truex Jr. is second seed, believe it or not, with three thousand and twenty nine points. With thirty twenty four is Denny Hamlin with twenty four bonus points. In fourth place is Ryan Blaney. They are tied third and fourth. Fifth place is Kyle Busch with 30, 22 points. 22 bonus points for Kyle Busch. Yeah. Chase Elliott is sixth with 30, 21 points. 21 bonus points have been earned by Chase Elliott. In seventh place is Alex Bowman with 30, 15 points. 15 bonus points for Bowman. His teammate, William Byron, at 30, 14 points in the eighth place seed, 14 bonus points. So that eighth place seed is actually going to be the lowest spot you can get to get into the next round. Um, that's where the cut line is. From behind eighth, you're out. Um, ninth place, Joey Logano, 30, 13 points, 13 bonus points to Logano. This could be a good round for Logano. He's won at two of the three tracks multiple times. So we'll see how that uh, fares out. Maybe with Brad Kozlowski as well. If Brad turns things around, he might be a dangerous threat in this round of 12. With 30, 108 points. Eight bonus points for Kozlowski. Christopher Bell will need a lot of sudden success. With 30,005 points, five bonus points, and so will Kevin Harvick. Um, Harvick, you know, he may be good at two of the three tracks, but you got to have a lot of luck here. 30, yeah. 30,002 points. Two bonus points for Harvick compared to 59 bonus points of Larson. You've got to have a good race. But we, I, I knew right away with the round of 16 that Kevin Harvick would have the best car or the best uh, the tr- best tracks for him and Ronnie Childers. What do you guys think about Harvick for a minute? Uh, I don't know because there's some races he's good at. But the thing is, he's good at Vegas. Tell yeah, Vegas. He's good at yeah, you got Vegas. He's good there. But then you got Talladega. That's the problem. Harvick has not finished a Talladega race. He's always front. been wrecked. He's always been involved in some sort of wreck. And then the Charlotte Roval. That race is going to be chaotic. I know that even with practice and qualifying. Remember the first year, Joseph? Remember that first year of the Roval with that horrible chagane they had, which I'm glad they were. <laughs> that people kept hitting in practice and qualifying like. The Charlotte Roval is a tough track. Even with the new chicane, like Alex Bowman pulled the Sebastian Vettel, like basically all three tracks are tough. So it's basically a challenge. Listen, because the way how I see it is like this. If it's slim to none, if going into the try to trying to make it into the round of eight, it's just that one race, you're gonna have to go all out and make a statement. Yeah, he he's won at Vegas before, so yeah, he he needs to make something happen. Yeah, literally. You know, one thing with Kevin Harvey is always expect the unexpected. He knows how to execute. I mean, the guy is so late in his career. Especially, he knows how to execute under pressure. Yeah, 
huge. Hugely. All right. So we're going to keep our conversations going with the Cup Series when we talk about our preview at Las Vegas. But let's talk about what happened on Friday. And you think oh. you think the racing between, uh, you know, the Cup Series drivers on Saturday was chaotic enough. Just watch the finish of what happened on Friday. And, yeah, uh, checkers and records. How about both? AJ Allmendinger led only the final lap, and he did it sideways across the checkered flag to get his ninth career win. Um, an unbelievable way to close out the regular season. And of course, he was battling to hold off Austin Sinrick, who these two have been so close in the championship, and and there's they're, they share a lot of the same characteristics too, you know, driving abilities that it really does show how successful these two can really be. And I think the latest rivalry between Almendinger and Sindrick has reached a breaking point. I think the breaking point was on Friday at the checkered flag at Bristol. Whether they admit it or not, because they seem very friendly off the track, as always, hmm. I think it's just about to get started. One of these two will bring home the championship. If not, it might be someone else. Maybe in the likes of of Algeyer or Hemrick. But we have to wait. We have seven races and two rounds before this championship four to really see where this is going to go. Uh, if you have been hiding under a rock, you probably already watched the uh, a highlight of the finish of the NASCAR Xfinity Series race at Bristol Motor Speedway on Friday night. How did it happen? Well, coming to the white flag, Austin Sindrick was almost clear of both AJ Allmendinger and Justin Allgaier on the outside line getting a huge run, but there was contact and he could not clear the two Chevrolets. Sindrick then um, had a big run from behind by AJ Allmendinger as AJ's, um, AJ's crossover proved successful. Or actually, other, um, yeah, so he passed um, Sindrick. No, no, no. no Allmendinger was already in front. Yeah, know. and then Austin Center just throws it off for clips the the sixteen. Now uh, the sixteen tries to block, and they both go for a spin, like a synchronized spin to the checkered flag, and the fo- the the photography for that picture that you saw, everyone saw at the at the line. If that doesn't scream insanity, I don't know what is. And we're only getting started. It's gonna be something. Very, very special that people are going to remember for a long time. And I can't wait to see how this goes into the Cup Series because we know that these guys have plans to run in Cup. Well, AJ, not the full schedule, but Austin Sinderick will. So imagine that this, this guy bringing it to the Cup level now next year. But in here, they're going to be fighting for a championship. And I think it's just them against themselves, and the world is watching. Yeah. Meanwhile, Riley Herbst had a brief glimmer of possibly taking this win away. I thought he was this could be in his chance. He had a great yeah. car, great drive by Riley Hurst. Um started eighth, kept it in the top ten all night. His best finish with Stuart Haas Racing was definitely a long awaited third place finish. Fourth place went to Justin Alkire, who won stage one, led ninety two laps and started second. The driver who won his first career win at this track eleven years ago finished in fourth. Right. Brandon Jones ran it out the top five. Justin Haley finished sixth. Harrison Burton seventh at his home track. Uh, Harrison started sixth, but he's going to have some work to do in the playoffs, as will Mike Snyder, who starts 17th. Sam Mayer, for the second time in his career, gets a best finish of ninth when he led 49 laps and started in the 22nd spot. Had a really unique pit strategy by the Junior Motorsports crew, which allowed Sam Mayer to keep his Chevrolet towards the front. Expect a lot of great things out of this driver. That's for sure. And Daniel Hemrick. Gosh. Let's 78 laps, one stage two, and rounds out the top 10. He was third at the final restart, but some contact resulted in him bringing a flat tire Toyota to the top 10 in the 10th spot. So So unfortunate. I know. I'm – I'm, I'm pulling for Daniel Hemberg. I know his first career win is a matter of when at this point. I hope it comes this year because he will be competing for this championship. Yeah. And has been close to two championships 
already, but yeah, he's still at zero wins. Still not as many second places before the first win as Dale Jarrett has 11. That's a record in that he owns before he got his first win, but still. But he can still tie that, possibly. You'll never know. Guess right. he's trying, but. I have a record you want to tie, but. No. All right, let's continue. Look at the top 10. Starting first, like I said, for the cup race, you may be placed first, but that doesn't mean you're going to have the car to win. No, Gregson led only four laps from first place and finished 12th. How about Sage Karam? How about choosing Bristol as your first oval race in a stock car? Career best finish of 16th. Did he complete all the laps or did he finish one or two laps down? Regardless, as top 20 at Bristol in an oval debut? He actually finished a lap down, but still. Yeah. 16th. Yeah, 16th. Yeah, he's still up there. Yeah, in an oval in a stock car. Yeah, that was impressive that he got 16th. This place is very un unforgiving. Yeah. Um, and as we learned, the crowd is unforgiving as well. Uh, Jeb Burton, who finished 24th at his home track, led seven laps and started seventh. Yeah, you know, like I said, there's like three or two or three or four home tracks for the Burtons. Because um, well, pretty much anyone who, who has, was born into a NASCAR family can call Bristol their home track. Um, especially if you're from Virginia. Remember, it's a border city. All right. So speaking of racing at Bristol, which, of course, is just phenomenal. I wish I could race Bristol every day the way they've been racing. Um, we're going back to the mile and a half. So we have 302 miles at Las Vegas Motor Speedway to start off this playoffs. So let me explain how the NASCAR Xfinity Series playoffs work. 12 drivers get into the NASCAR Xfinity Series playoffs. You are set with 2,000 points, and then plus the amount of bonus points you have acclaimed throughout the process. There are three races for two rounds that will finish the number of competitors from 12 to 8. And then for the round of 8, you'll have three races to compete for the Championship 4 race. The highest of those four cars in that championship four race is this season champion. So this is the start of the round of 12. You have the Las Vegas 302, the Talladega 300. Yes, it, the Talladega in the fall is back once again. Uh, this time it's a fixture in the calendar out of filler race. And the Charlotte Road Course will close out the championship. And what we learned from last year, <laughs> nobody is safe through yeah, those well, three races. Yeah, but remember last year, the Charlotte Roval had – the XA race was more rain than the cup race. Talladega, you know, Talladega's Talladega. Vegas is more normal, basically, compared to, except for Kyle Wetterman uh, parking in front of the pace car when he crashed. That was kind of funny, but other than that, like, the Roval, we know. It's tough. Even in the wet, even in the dry, it's tough. Talladega. Saw, last year was incredible. Ooh, with all the rain. rain. And lot and a Talladega, you can get caught up in a big one because people get you aggressive. Can be involved. You can be taken out of the race. You could be, too, yeah, being way too aggressive. Yeah. at Talladega is just well. Yeah, let's look at it's the just, seating. Where is everyone placed? So Austin Sinner, like I said, Austin Sinner and AJ Allmendinger are literally tied with the same amount of bonus points at forty-four bonus points. 2,000 points. So 2,000 points plus nine bonus points is where you place. They are shared first and second with 44 bonus points each. These guys are going to be neck and neck throughout this championship battle. Justin Allgaier is in third with 20 bonus points. So 20, 20 points plus 20 yeah. for Allgaier. He's placed third in the seeding. A great job getting those bonus points throughout the year. Fourth place, I'm surprised. If it weren't for Noel Gregson's last two races, he might have been seated lower than this for sure. Uh, 2017 points, 17 bonus points for Gregson. Justin Haley, 2015 bonus points, 15 or 2015 points with 15 bonus. Daniel Hemrick, 2014 points, 14 bonus points. He kind of had a series of bad races, bad finishes leading up to the end of the regular season, which led to a lower seating. The same can be said for both the Burton cousins, Jeb and Harrison. With nine bonus points for Jeb Burton, and Harris Burton has eight bonus points. Mike Snyder has five bonus points. He's nine. Uh, so remember, the cut line is, but is at eighth place. Beneath eighth, you're out. Yeah. Tenth place, Brandon Jones, three bonus points. Riley Herbst, 
two oh oh one points, one bonus point, and zero bonus points with two oh 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 is Jeremy Clements, who takes the last seed. Remember, these three races, you win in the round, you get put into the next round automatically. If you're in the championship hunt, you don't have to worry about the next race or races in the championship round for these playoffs. It is so tough, even if it's the most spread out of the of the three series in the playoffs, which, of course, seems to always be the case for Xfinity. Uh, but... Aside from AJ, aside from Austin Cindric, who do you think might be the one prevailing in this round? Ooh. I say Justin Allgaier. Yeah, I think of Justin Allgaier because he's decent at Las Vegas. He's done good Vegas. He's good on the, the plate tracks, and he's not bad on road courses. So I say Justin Allgaier in the seven car. Yeah. Allgaier might be a good bet. Harrison Burton. He might. He, he's got great tracks coming in the round of eight. If he can do well to get himself into the round of eight, then Listen, watch out for Harrison Burton. Yeah, I was about to say the same thing with Harrison Burton, man. The guys right now, he's just like, he's got, he's got it locked. You got three of your best tracks coming up. Yeah, you're definitely gonna get yourself in the round of eight. Yes, yeah, so to get there, that that's gonna be the question. Um, so we're gonna let it all unfold Saturday night when the green flag drops to Las Vegas. But let's take a look at the truck series closing round of ten, which determined our round of eight and saw two drivers be out of the championship hunt. Chandler Smith finally gets his first career win. We saw this was coming for about two years. Chandler Smith only had to lead five laps for this. Uh, he started in the seventh spot, and it was his first career win. And it was a long time coming for Chandler Smith, Justin. Yeah, it took a while. He ran four races in 2000 and. Uh... He ran, remember, he ran four races in 2019. He ran more races last year, which, like, his races in 2019 were good. Last year was up and down, but it took a while till he got his first win because some races he was so good but just couldn't deliver, and here he could deliver. He he only led five laps, but at the end he knew he knew he needed he knew he needed to win. Because he had not many points. Like, he was below the cut line in second place. So he knew he had to win. He moved, he moved Sheldon Creed for the win. And that's how he got, ended up getting the victory. Well, Chandler Smith, you know, I feel like he's got, probably got a lot, more, a lot more pressure to do well now. And I'm not even saying that because there's a there's a certain someone who someone's who are not even in the truck series right now. They're taking all the attention away from the Toyota factory um, executives. Ty Gibbs, Sammy Smith, Corey Heim, uh, Jesse Love. Need I say more? Yeah. I mean, Gracie Trotter to an extent. That's five names right there. And here's Chandler Smith who had done almost double the things that those names that I mentioned have done in the last year or two in 2017, 18, 19. We were just waiting for his big break to come in the truck series. And I'm just glad he got it. You know, it's, it's going to bring a lot of, a lot of pressure off his back that he, you know, cause some, for some drivers, it's like getting your first win. is like climbing an impossible mountain. But once you get over that first mountain, that mountain seems to be easier to climb when you, do it again and again and uh you know maybe it's just that mental ladder you have to climb but he got through it he got the first win. uh very happy for him that's for sure but he had to be physical he it wasn't easy he had to you know hold his ground against sheldon creed hold his ground against his own teammate john and anima check and hold off grand and figure to do it but the guy took no prisoners second place went to grant and finger 
who started in sixth, the highest not playoff driver. Third place, John Hunter Nemechek started second. He's on to the next round. Fourth place, Stuart Friesen makes it into the next round. Good for Stuart Friesen to, to get back into the flow of things. Fifth place, Johnny Sauter, a well-needed top five for the veteran. Sixth place went to Carson Hosvar, who led six slaps and started eighth and brought it home in the sixth place. He will be racing in the round of eight for a championship. Matt Crafton's quest to make history and becoming the second driver ever to win four NASCAR Truck Series championships continues on. He continues that quest with a seventh place finish at Bristol Motor Speedway. And you know what? Matt Crafton is still kicking it at his age, so good for him. Zane Smith barely makes it into the next round. The odds were against him. He had a poor handling truck on race day. But the team got to work, and they didn't quit. And neither did Zane Smith, and he's on to the next round. Ren Rhodes had the odds against him as well. You know, only two, only two drivers go out. Then there's eight that leave. So it's a tough round. Yeah. So ben Rhodes finally gets through into this round of the championship. And then Todd Gillen, oh, so close to making it to the round of eight. He falls short by just one or two points. I don't even know how. It was, I think it was two points, yeah. Because he, because Todd Gillen would have made it in if the two trucks of Zane Smith and Ben Rhodes didn't pass him. But on the final restart, you get, end up getting passed by both and couldn't catch them. So, yeah, he only was eliminated by two points, which really sucked for uh, Todd Gillen and the Front Row Motorsports team. And for Ford. This has been yeah. a race for them. Yeah. And season. Uh, Ooh. Last two see, like, you know, the, the loss yeah. of Thor Sport. But, really yeah. Taking a lot. Well, and, yeah. And also, remember in that race, <laughs> all David Gillen's trucks did not even finish. Right. So Todd Gillen was just, you know, trying to work on um, winning. And odds, you know, the odds are kind of against him, but he did everything he needed to do. And guess what? Tyler is coming up. He's got a good track ahead for him. Yeah. We'll see how that goes. All right, let's look through the rest of the finishing order of classification on Friday's truck race, or Thursday's truck race. How about Doug Kobe, modified champion in his truck series debut, finishes 12th after starting 30th. Wow. He drove for GMS Racing. Great run for him. Yeah. How about Lawless Allen? 18th place career best finish for Lawless Allen. He started the 25th. Sheldon Creed. He led 189 laps. He was just one of three leaders. The only driver to lead double-digit amount of laps in the race was Sheldon Creed, and he did triple digits. Started yeah. first. Never looked back. He won stage one, stage two, 189 laps. Caution comes out. Field reorders. And... I guess he got eaten alive by the yeah. trucks. Yeah, that was uh, unfortunate. He does go on to the next round. Unfortunately, for the third consecutive year, Austin Hill will not uh, continue his fight for the championship. Um, he started 10th, finished. He was actually out of the race in 24th. Yeah. He was collected in that hard crash that took wow. out. Well, remember, he was not collected. He actually is the one that got spun first. Yeah, Josh he got Barry, spun first. Yeah, Josh Berry tapped the back of his car. Uh, have Josh Berry tapped the back of Austin Hill's truck, spun down the track, but Austin Hill. Austin had Austin had nowhere to go though. Yeah, but he bounced off the inside wall, bounced back up the track, which collected Haley Diga and the one which. Uh, the the Sims uh, saw that I don't know the fans or something. They were mad at Austin Hill for collecting Why Haley Deacon. Mad at yeah, they were mad at him, but I'm like, Josh Berry's the one that turned Austin yeah, Hill. Haley Deacon's on the first track. DNF of the season. The yeah. Way. Yeah, and uh, yeah, and that was not a good night for the David Gillen trucks. All three trucks crashed out of the race. Yeah. yeah, Tanner crashed out early, then Taylor crashed out, and then Haley crash crashed out. So all three of the David Gillen trucks did not finish the race, which was not the best night for David Gillen racing. And of course, the, the satellite team front room of which is driven by David's son, Todd Gillen, fell just shy out of the championship hunt. So, yeah. it's a night to forget for the Ford guys. All right. 
going to be back next week. We have Las Vegas coming up for 200 miles. But what does the round of eight look like? Well, the round of eight, um, we have Las Vegas 200. We have the Talladega 250. Then the Martinsville 200. Yep. Um, and then you get your four drivers for the championship four. And how does championship four race work? So like I said before, many times, the highest of the four championship four drivers in that final race wins the championship. It's pretty it's simple, but to get there, it's not that simple. Everybody starts with 3,000 bonus points. Um, then it's plus the amount of bonus points after the points you earn, or after starting at 3,000 plus the bonus points you earn, that's where you're seated. John Hunter Nemechek with 50 bonus points is in first. Second place, Sheldon Creed with 26 bonus points. Third place, Ben Rhodes with 19 bonus points. Ben Rhodes really had a lot of bonus points going into this championship playoffs. Zane Smith in fourth with nine bonus points. Uh, Chandler Smith with six bonus points. Matt Crafton uh, in six with nine bonus – with four bonus points. Carson Hosbar in seventh with two bonus points. And Stuart Friesen with one bonus point. Yeah. Any expectations, any thoughts on that? Uh, like – the thing, like I, like I know it's gonna be tough races because you got, you got the, you got two hundred la, uh, hundred thirty four laps, two hundred miles at Vegas. Then you go to Talladega, which is ninety four laps at a track that is tough, and the truck package is always interesting at the end, so you can get caught up in the big one. Martinsville, another short track, so basically you gotta be prepared and also like. In the truck series, remember this. In the truck series with the package, uh, close racing. I know it's not like the NASCAR Cup package. This truck package, it's always close racing at mile and a half. The plate tracks are always hectic. The short tracks are... you. Th there's always stuff Race happening. Quick. Yeah. Hey, I wanted to say something, too. And what? the fact that, especially for Vegas... The, the packages when it comes to Vegas, you always see entertaining races, hence last year, you know? Yeah. But Talladega, honestly, truth be told, it's going to be an absolute nut. No, man. I don't, I don't want to I don't wanna say... Yeah, let's just forget about it. Talladega is just not going to end well. Yeah. Never has. Never yeah. will. Well, well, you never like know. Same old, same old. Well, yeah. well, well, Talladega is always interesting. Uh, Wendell Chavis almost won there in 2018 which, in his last truck start. If he would have won, that would have been just interesting, but... Like there's a, like Talladega, you it's always chaotic there. No matter like you can be in the big one early. Like last year, we had a big one on the 13th lap that involved Zane Smith, and he never recovered. No, he had also even his, though he made it to the championship four, it could yeah. have wiped him out. Yeah, he had his teammate that at the time Chase Purdy drove the 24 truck, which or, or no, the yeah 24 truck. He was in the wreck too when he kind of ca actually caused the wreck. But other than that, it's been uh, interesting to see uh, how, uh, yeah, those three rounds have Martinsville, just the last race of that round. Short track racing again to end the round of six, uh, round of eight. And you're going to, there. there's going to be a fe people beating and banging and. Getting into your fender and hitting it. Not have any clean trucks, even the no. clean truck. Yeah, yeah, and then you got the yeah that all determines the round of uh, that determines the round of the championship four at Phoenix. Yeah, short races because it's only 134 laps here. Talladega is only 94, and the truck race at Martin only Martinsville only 200. So short races. You can't uh, be sitting in the back early. You got to make moves to get up there. Yeah. It's hard to recover from as well, I've noticed. Yeah. Um, 
All right, let's uh, let's uh, talk some single seater racing. We had a lot going on at Monterey last night for the IndyCar Series penultimate race, um, and I, I just gotta say it was very it was very concrete from the start who was gonna win this race. I think you didn't have to watch the race to know what what was gonna happen. I didn't think it was gonna be Herta winning again. Wow! But to be honest. When you really look back at 2019, when he wasn't even an, an Andretti uh, car yet, it was just under Harding Steinbrenner before Andretti wanted yeah. him so bad they just picked up the entire team and brought him over. <laughs> so if he could do that, then he could definitely win now in a much better equipment. That's what he did. Colton Hurt and never looked back from the start. He got his seventh career pole, led all but four laps in this 95 lap Grand Prix. Oh, oh, yeah. He picked up his fifth career win in the eighth time he's been on the podium. If that's uh, not a preview for next year, I don't know what is. Yeah, like Colton Herta, he's the real Listen, deal. Man. Yeah. I know Colton Herta. No, Colton Herta, man. Listen, the way how he's been driving this year, says it a lot about what he's going to do next year. Possibly championship contention? Maybe. For maybe for next year, but let let his work carry over for next year. That's what I gotta say. Yeah. And uh Justin uh you were saying something. You were saying I was saying about how Colin Her is like the real deal because like he's been showing he's basically the person that's been setting the pace for Andretti this year, because Rossi's a bit unstable in some races. Hunter Ray has just not been that good this season. James Hinchcliffe, I don't know. He's just, like, not consistent. Yeah, like, Hart is the best driver at Andretti right now. Yeah, this Ryan season. Hunter Ray is on yeah. his way out after 10 yeah. years. Yeah, which there's still the rumors possibly Groshan's going to be. It's in the almost all but confirmed. I think. Yeah, he just yeah. wants to do it like a fancy yeah. announcement or but, something. Oh, but, like but, going on. but like yeah. that would that would be good for Groshan going to the twenty eight because he's the. Well, you'll listen to the results where he finished, but yeah, Herda, he just he just said goodbye to the field. It's like goodbye field. I'm gonna go dominate the race, and that's what he did. Uh, and he did exactly what his father did in, uh, what was it, 98, 99? Yeah, it was. Yeah. A, Brian Hurd. I think it was 99, yeah. Back, oh, it was 99. Uh, Brian Hurd did it, that you know, back-to-back at Laguna Seca. Uh, and by the way, fun fact, the winningest driver at Laguna Seca won his four races in a row. So. Just consider that Bobby Ray Hall with True Sports. He did it four consecutive years in the 80s. So this track does suit drivers very well. But you have to you have to get around this easy to remember track. Yeah. You have yeah. to be the best at it. Alex Palau in this championship battle. He did almost everything possible. If Colton Hurd wasn't that unreachable, I wouldn't be surprised if he won this race. He had to work twice as hard to get to this uh, second place finish. He started fourth, his ninth career podium. And third place, if there was driver of the day, I'd give it to him. Roman Grosjean led four laps, the only laps outside of Colton Hurd. Started 13th and had an amazing late race charge. Took some risks to do it, but he got his third career podium. Wow. He outperformed, by the way, Dick, Dale Coyne Racing with Rick Ware Racing. Uh, material and Honda. He outperformed that car. If that's not something to to uh to be excited for, what you know, I mean let's be real. Worst kept secrets are pretty much simple, clear cut. He's going to Andretti next year. Yeah. Now try doing that for Andretti, you're gonna be on fire. Yeah, like Roman Groshaw, he's been performing so good in his rookie season. People are like, you know, when he left in, uh, F1, people are like, oh, him going to IndyCar, he's going to be a bust. No, oh. like, like he drove for Haas, which Haas last year was better than uh, this cow they're racing this year. But other than Haas, other than talking bad about Haas, but him going to IndyCar, when I heard that, I'm like, I feel like he's going to do 
decent in his first season. He's he's done really well for the equipment he's in. He has a shot to get Rookie of the Year from Scott McLaughlin. And mind you, Scott McLaughlin is full-time. Grosjean missed, you know, he missed two events, which was Texas and... No, he missed two Texas. Two. And also... And the Indy 500. So he's missed three. three. Yeah, three races. While McLaughlin's ran every race, and Grosjean's only 20 points behind. So he has a shot at Rookie of the Year, which is... Between Grosjean and McLaughlin to the final round, but Grosjean, it's gonna be on a street circuit. Yeah, and like Grosjean's just been so good this and season. Just, just wait and see. He's, he's, he's incredible. He took a lot of rest, even to the lap cars. When we saw, you know, Chip Ganassi, Jimmy Johnson holding off, you know, as a lap car trying to get, trying to beat Grosjean to the corkscrew down the hill. It looked oh. like he was committed, and you know, that he wasn't gonna have to any worry about. Grosjean. No, no, no. He, Grosjean took the risk. I mean, I don't know how hey, that yeah. post penalty. You, you do that in, in front of the FIA, they're gonna, oh. they're gonna, they're gonna punish you to the moon and back. But <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was close between him. That was and that was some that Ooh. was phenomenal. Uh, yeah, driving by Roman Grosjean. It, I can't wait to see how this goes in the long term. Let's continue on. Graham Ray Hall, a nice fourth place effort. He started 12th and fifth place. Patricio Award. What do we got to say? He needs a good race at at Long Beach. And it's going to be difficult to understand because uh, Palau and Award have never raced in any car event at Long Beach before. Yeah. It's going to be interesting. Not on the schedule last year. And this is a track that's usually part of the first few races of the season. Yeah, it's going to be back in the first few races because the next year's schedule was released. It's one of the first races, but this year it got moved to the finale instead of going to Laguna Seca. They're ending here at Long Beach, which is a street circuit, a tough one. But when we go into the uh, race preview, it's tough circuit, but it's going to be interesting for that title hunt. Very much. Marcus Erickson is no longer part of this championship. He he no. held on, but a sixth place effort was not no. enough but, to, but, to keep the speed in the title hunt. But he's still solid in points. Yeah, an amazing season, yeah. though. Yeah. yeah like, you know, I hope he continues yeah. this oh, path in IndyCar because it's yeah. working so well for him. And, yeah. Uh, Erickson. Oh, by the way, his two wins were at street circuits. Oh, yeah. Out for Long Beach. Yeah. Yeah, like his first one was at Detroit, which was a, a bit chaotic because of Will Power's issue. And by but, the way, he never raced Detroit. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah, he won. He raced in 2019. I forgot. Yeah, he drove. Yeah, he drove for uh, this for P, the Smith team. SP. Yeah, S before yeah, this, yeah, and you know, uh, like the thing about Marcus Erickson, he won like the first race. It was a bit chaotic when Power's car had issues. But the second race, he hit streets. He wasn't he supposed to stay in it. No, like he was in the air. Like, oh, he's done. No, he yeah, ended up retirement. Winning. He's about nope. to drive and pull over. He's not worried. <laughs> no, he ended up finish going to the pits, replacing the wing, gets back on track, ends up winning the event. It's like what? So basically, That's yeah, it's funny. Gonna, yeah, but it's gonna be interesting. But yeah. At least Erickson got a solid finish at the track, which is good. I can't him. wait to see how how this goes. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what to say. Nashville's uh, Music City Grand Prix was hectic. Then just <laughs> wait for Long Beach. Um, you have a lot of hungry drivers for sure. Joseph Newgarden is still mathematically in this championship hunt, but could have done better than seventh. I'm sure it would have helped yeah. him in the points. Yeah. But he's not a quitter. We know that. Oh, no. After he fell shy to Scott Dixon in the championship, and he's still looking for that third title. And you know what? It might just spiral over to next year. Because remember, he won the championship in 2017, fell short in 2018 as Dixon. The year after, he won the title. Next year, he fell short to Dixon again. <laughs> what do you know? I think we had a little pattern, but <laughs> yeah. you know, being mathematically eligible is not enough sometimes 
Oliver Askew ranks at home in ninth. He had a good car uh, start at fifth and stayed out of trouble, as did Ed Jones, who started 14th and rounded up the, the top 10. Now, we moved down to 17th place. Jimmy Johnson, career best effort, good for him, uh, started 25th. And how about Callum Eilat, career best finish for Callum Eilat as well, who started 26th. Well. Um, so, yeah, um, a pretty – seamless race for most of these guys um, yeah just as expected well, well Rossi had setbacks so spinning on the second lap after contact with his teammate he hit, hit the left rear of uh heard his car and spun into the gravel bringing out the first caution of the race because of him spinning into the gravel which was uh yeah not the best start for Rossi, trying to bow for the lead, gets in his teammate and spins. Yeah, but Long Beach, which is this Sunday, which is before the NASCAR race, it's going to be – and uh, the points are decent. Let's let's talk about the points now. So yeah. who who is mathematically able to win this championship? Well – it's three th three drivers now because yeah. you win the race. The winner received fifty four points, so seventy two points behind Scott Dixon. He's out. Yeah. Um, Alex Plow with five hundred and seventeen points has a thirty five point advantage over Patricio Award, who is minus thirty five at four hundred eighty two points. Yeah. In third place is Joseph Newgarden, looking for his third championship, driving for Team Penske. With yeah. 469 points, he is 48 points behind, still mathematically eligible. Now, this race yesterday ruled out Scott Dixon and Marcus Erickson for the championship, as Dixon is minus 72 and Erickson is minus 87. Colton Herta only leaped up to six in the championship, but he's out of it as well, minus 115. Graham Rahal is seventh, minus 143. Simon Pagano is eighth, minus one. 64. Will Power is ninth, minus 180. And Alexander Rossi is minus 213. So, yeah, there'll be differences in positions that they'll battle for, but as for the championship, it's going to be down to three drivers. And, you know, we have three different kinds of drivers we're talking about here. Alex Palau, the Spaniard who took a chance, leaving a possible F1, you know, journey um, when he was doing the Super Formula season a few years back to try IndyCar in his rookie year, which was COVID-affected, by the way. It was didn't go to plan, and he had to make a lot of sacrifices in his personal life overseas to make things work, make ends meet, and gets a contract with Chip Ganassi Racing and immediately starts to shine. This is a driver that I think, you know, he has a lot of Fernando Alonso in him. This is a driver who can be fast and stay fast and hold his ground from start to the checkered flag. You know, there's a lot of similarities between what I mentioned, Alex Palau, and then Patricio Award, known as Pato. Pato Award for Aaron McLaren SP has done a brilliant job in this year. In fact, it, it was just a pickup of last year's success when he finally got his first win at race two at Texas and uh, followed up with another substantial victory uh, later on in the season that brought him back in the championship at Bell Isle, but you know what? He hasn't won since Detroit, but you know, I don't think a Mexican driver has won a championship in IndyCar as far as I'm aware, but this could be the year. Same with the Spaniard. You know, we haven't seen a Spaniard do so well in IndyCar since Oriol Servia's days. Yeah. They haven't seen a Mexican driver do so well since the, you know, um, Adrian Fernandez days. And, uh, Got the other driver, the other driver, but yeah, Adrian Fernandez days. You know, this is something really cool that we're seeing. And then, of course, the American hero Joseph Newgarden from Nashville, Tennessee, for Team Penske, looking for his third championship. You know, how American can that get? Andy Carr, Team Penske, and then you have Joseph Newgarden from Nashville, and going for a third championship. This is like. This was the Mark Donahue dream that was cut short, really, that has carried on in, in a different driver in Joseph Newgarden. I see a lot of the same characteristics, but, you know, 
he's going to have a lot of work to do. And when I say that, I, I really mean it. The odds are against him. He needs every bonus point possible in a flawless race. But unfortunately, his name is not Alexander Rossi. Well, we're going to talk more about IndyCar later in the podcast. In our race preview, so just let's move on. Let's talk about more championships. Another penultimate race of the season. This was overseas at Circuit de Spa, Frankershop. The European Le Mans Series, four hours of Spa. And should we even be surprised as much as we're impressed as we're still as we're still impressed with Team WRT? How about these guys? Louis Deltras, Robert Kubica, what a month he's had. And ye think. Orca 07. I mean, this is, I understand that Team WRT is a long time successful program in GT racing for sports cars, but they have never crossed the line to, to start prototypes. And they did so with LMP2 is to compete in just European Law Series, just to run the full tour, see what happens. Go for the 24 hour zone of Mans, bring two cars, just see what happens, right? If the race ended one lap early in Le Mans, it would have been a 1 2 finish. And guess what? They won their very first race in prototypes outright in the European Le Mans series this year. And not to mention, Team WRT is doing this with three completely different kinds of drivers here. Yefi, who is the 2016 French F4 champion and last year's Euro Formula champion. This Chinese driver is taking risks. He wants to be an F1, you know, like his countrymate Greg Show has been doing and vying for. But he's saying, I want to try something different. Now, we know a lot of single seater drivers take the route as prototype racing. That's nothing new or sports car racing in general. But he wants to do this to make himself present and is working with Team WRT. Um, Louis Delatraz, who made his last uh, effort in Formula 2, got 10 podiums, but never seemed to crack through and get a win after th- three seasons of, actually four seasons of trying and uh, 92 starts. Louis Delatros is a great sports car driver, but never reached this height of a level. And guess what? This is just the start. And he's the son of another successful driver uh, who was successful in Le Mans getting two class wins of, of course, Jean Denis Delatraz. Remember him? Yeah. He had three entries in F1 in the early to mid 90s. But yeah, just to just to clarify. And then, of course, I'm saving the best for last. Everybody knows this guy. Robert yeah. Kubica, yeah. the most successful uh, Polish driver in Grand Prix racing history, who was known for overcoming so many obstacles in his racing career to just even stay alive. He had a close call with losing his life about 10 years ago, which made, you know, everybody that, that, that loved him just say, stop, look at yourself. Do you, is this what you really want to do? And he said, actually, yes, this is. Um, he had a, such a bad crash that was in a rally, you know, when his, when he took a pause in F1 and, and uh, went to some of the rally events. And then he went to the WRC. Remember that? Yeah. He came back to F1. And here's Robert Kubica saying, I want to try something different. Let's go to sports cars. Let's just give it a shot. Um, Work with high-class racing. Run the 24 Hours of Daytona, which aged like milk. And then run the European Le Mans Series and run Le Mans this year. Three wins. This team is incredible. They got 100 points secure. And this is a committed program and you know, what's so special about it. They got to do it at home in front of a near full capacity crowd at circuit de Spa Franker shop. This is a home team and the place was buzzing much like they were supposed to be buzzing at the F1 Grand Prix weekend about a month ago. Oh, geez. And you know what? I'm glad everybody there got to experience it because it was a special one and it happened, you know, with the dry conditions and a safe race. So, 
Well, that was the case. And we're going to talk about the actual classifications of this event. But let's get to that. So they completed 99 laps to get the win. Uh, class top five. I'll talk about them for a minute. Team WRT Oracle 7. They get the win. And the championship all in one day. The penultimate race of this year. So this is just like this is like a dream, dream way to to win an LMP2. Second place overall. How about Duquesne team? Number 30. Car number 30 finished in second in the class. And that was a good drive by Tristan Gomendy. Um I think a lot of eyes have been on him now as the co-drivers, you know, we have veteran Mimo Rojas and another veteran, Rene Bender. They brought the Duquesne team to second overall. Third place was car number 65, Penny Racing. Remember, they got a win. Yeah. A long-awaited first win with drivers James Allen, Will Stevens, Julian Canal finishing third overall in car 65. Fourth place overall was our Pro-Am trophy winner for the LMP2 team. In fact, they won pole overall to start the race, which is number 37. Cool Racing, Orca 07. Um, with drivers Alexandre Coigny, Nicolas Lapierre, and Charles Milsey. Ironically, a, a, another Team WRT driver came through from that race. And then fifth in the class was the number 32 United Auto Sports Barco 7, which was driven by Manuel Maldonado, Nico Yaman, uh, and Javin Uter. So there's your top five overall. Now let's move on to the LMP3 class. And the LMP3 class, while most drivers had three, some had two, and it, sometimes it takes two to win. And that's what happened. Completing 96 laps, taking the win, was the number four car. The only car outside of a Ligier JSP320 was the Duquesne M30D08. <laughs> that was won in the class by... Uh, DKR Engineering, the Luxembourg team driven by Lawrence Hoare and Matthew D. Barbet, just two drivers completed 96 laps. In fact, only three cars finished on the same lap as the class winner. It was just the podium that got 96 laps in the back. Cool racing number 19 of uh, uh, Nicholas Croyton. Uh, Nicolet Malini and Matthew Bell. Brought home second in the Ligier, JSP 320. Um, and then third place in the class podium was the number two, United Auto Sports, um, J, JSP 320. Car number three was driven by Andrew Bentley. Actually, no, car number two was driven by Edward Kel, Help, Wayne Boyd, and Rob Weldon. Uh, oh. It was car number two, not car three. So let's move on to the Fourth place car in the class was the number eight Graf. Uh, I finished one lap behind the class winner uh, in Lige with uh, with uh, I think it was uh, Eric Trulier, Sebastian Page, and David Drew. Then, of course, fifth in class was the number twenty Team Virage. DJ of uh, Garrett Grist, Canadian driver, and two Americans, Rob Hodes and Charles Cruz, run for this Polish team. And I think they're all really close friends off the track, I heard. So they had yeah. great chemistry to put that car fifth in the class. Now, unlike, you know, the top two, it was all Ferrari <laughs> in LMGTE. Um, oh. To just put it lightly, it was a Ferrari podium for this class. Car number 80, 8, AF Corsa, Ferrari, 488 GTE Evo, completed in 93 laps. And by the way, it was so close between almost all the cars in the class outside of the Spirit Race. But the drivers that brought home the class win were Francois Parado. How about Emmanuel Collard? Two French Whoa. drivers that have been in the sport for 20-plus years. And Alessio Rivera, the Italian, completing 93 laps to get the job done. Then we had a pair of Iron Lynx Ferraris. Number 80, Iron Lynx Ferrari 488 GTE Evo. Uh, 
Matteo Cressoni. Reno Mastronardi and Miguel Molina, who is a long time, long time fighter in the series, sports car racing in general. Ferrari brought it home second in class. And then the sister car ran out the podium was number 83. Iron Lynx Ferrari 488 GT Evo of Michelle Gatting, Ryle Fry, and Sarah Bovey. Fourth place in the class was the highest Porsche. Uh, just out, just outside of the podium, completing 93 laps, just like the class winner, by the way. It's just to show you how competitive it was. It was a 93 Proton competition. Uh, Porsche 911 RSR 19, driven by uh, Felipe Lazier, Richard Leeds, and uh, what's the last ever? Uh, Michael Fassbender. Yeah. Uh, then we had in fifth place was the number 60. The final car in the lead lap was number 60. Iron Links, once again, Iron Links Ferrari 488 GT Evo. Uh, car 60 was driven by Pablo Ruberti, who is a veteran from Italy. Claudio Schiavone and Giorgio Cernagiotto. Who yeah. has seen success in the SRO events? So there you have it. You know, yeah. Ferrari came prepared oh, and got the results that they were uh, working for. So yeah. And now let's oh, talk yeah. about the championship. As Justin, you were here about to say something. I was about to say my pick was the '93. <laughs> you know that '93 car, but yeah. I I watched that final restart. Remember that when they went back green, the '93 uh, Mike uh, Philippe Blazer was here. He didn't go too well. He didn't uh, he didn't go well on the restart. He just didn't get the best restart compared to the number 83. He tried everything, but it wouldn't work. But yeah, the Ours point. Was too good. Yep. Let's and, talk about the championship. Uh, Justin, okay. one more thing. Yeah, LMP2, the championship is already clinched for the 41. Which is very unfortunate for the 26 team. They only completed one lap. The G-Drive Racing entry oh. R26 oh. was driven by uh, Nick DeVries, Roman Rusinov, and Franco Colapinto for this event. And now, oh. you know, their last draw just wasn't working. So, with one race to go, like I said, it's clinched for the overall championship. It's number 41 team WRT. Orca 07 compared to so they have 100 points flat. That's just too many, you know, for because you got 25 points for a win. Obviously, <laughs> that's exceeding 25 points for anything by G Drive Racing for the next race. Yeah. Uh, 64 points for the car 26. Third place is the 65 Penny Racing Orca 07 with 62.5 points. Fourth place is the number 22 United Auto Sports Orca 07 with 61 points. And fifth place is the number 30 Duquesne Team Orca 07 with 52 points. A very good run by Duquesne Team. Can I give them credit with credits too? First podium was second place effort. Yeah. All right. And now LMP3 will come down in the final race. Between two teams. Yeah. 19 Cool Racing Leger GSP 320. And the number, number four. The DKR. Yeah. They're separated by five points. Then you go down the third place, which is the number two. Yeah, I got a sports entry, 56 and a half points. Interior competition number 13 is has 42 points. And then the number eight graph entry, 34 points. So they're, they're not they're not there. But in the GTM, 20 points. In the GT, you know, LMGT class, yeah. which is the 80 Iron Lynx, for, has... 20 points over the 88 F course entry with 81. Third is the 55 Spirit of Race entry with 77 points. Fourth is the 77 Proton Competition entry with 47 points. And then this is close for fourth place because the 60 Iron Lynx Ferraris one point behind the number 77 for fourth. Right, that is the Proton Prepared WeatherTech Racing Porsche. Yeah. That yeah. also competes for the championship in the States, which right now in the States, it's, it hasn't been looking too good for them. 
No, nah, it's been uh, – in the States, it's been looking more Corvette. Right, because of, we have a lack of car count. It would have been nice if we see all – like that same roster compete for both championships if it were, if, if, if we were all that easy to do in the world. But, you know, I mean, hey, you got to appreciate the LMGTs because we're not going to be here forever. We already know that their years are being numbered. So, well – We'll definitely uh, enjoy the moments while they're still here. And congratulations again to Team WRT. That's a great story to tell for the future. It's how they how they took a chance on prototype racing and executed. I think a lot of people knew that was their, their best opportunity yet. All right. We got a few more races to cover before we talk about the upcoming events for this race weekend. And we're going to start that off with, um, with going back to Bristol Motor Speedway for some action that completed the arca east series and we'll talk yeah. about the final standings for the uh east series championship after we talk the race first ty gibbs led all but three laps made this one very easy yeah. uh, for those who covered it <clears throat> <Yeah>. <laughs> 10 wins in the season uh, you never look back and that means that joe gibbs racing won every single race except for the first one in the east season that was incredible stuff he yeah one 97 on the 200 laps. That's a yeah. beautiful drive. And how fitting for Sammy Smith, the champion, to finish right behind his fu- his future star of the teammate, Ty Gibbs, bringing yeah. home the championship. We'll discuss that in a minute. Let's keep on talking with the results here. Third place, Taylor Gray, the highest forward, pretty much highest of anyone that I could not keep up with the, the two youngsters at Gibbs. Fourth place, Nick Sanchez, highest Chevrolet, and fifth place, Corey Heim, who did lose in the championship. However, uh, I will mention that 26th place retired was Andy Jankowiak, who did lead the other three laps that were not led no. by Ty Gibbs. No, not Andy. It was actually Tad Moffat. Tad, oh, Tad led Moffitt. three. Yeah, there, Andy did not lead laps, but sadly he crashed, which sucked right. for Andy, which is – he ran the modified tour, which was – Top he top ran, that race, so. Yeah, but still sucked that he crashed in that Bristol race. It's, and he lost the car. Yeah, because he, yeah, then uh, the Bristol was interesting. Uh, <laughs> let's let's talk about the um, the final standings, though, because this was yeah. the end of a season and a nice successful one for Sammy Smith. Yeah. Um, here is the final top 10 standings in this championship. Sammy Smith. Uh, Won three races, seven top fives and top tens, and a pole led 396 laps in relation to second place Daniel Dye, who only led two laps. Now, that shows how high <laughs> that was for Sammy Smith, finishing up with a 34 point margin of victory for this championship. It's the third championship, third driver's championship in the East Series by Joe Gibbs Racing, and the first yeah. in 10 years. Of course, that was when Max Gresham won in 2011, yeah. and of course, 13 years ago, or 14 years ago, I mean, yeah. was Joey Logano, uh, who ironically was 17 years old at the time in 2007. Yeah. Yeah, Sammy Smith, good championship, yeah. And second place was Daniel Dye. Third was Raja Karuth. Give a call to Raja Karuth. Yep. Driving the number six or Rev Racing. He had no teammates in the East. He had a teammate which was Sanchez in the full ARCA series, but he finished P3. Solid run in the points for Raja in his rookie season. But no, time again, I would love to see yeah. what you do. Carry well, on. But he's actually, I saw like there's an... He's already going Xfinity racing. So. Yeah. yeah, and he's also running this weekend. You know that uh, Marnsville event, that late model event, the Valley the Star... 300. Yeah, the, 300. Yeah, there's thir- there's uh there like there's only thirty eight starters. There's over seventy entries so far for that race. So which that race is on track pass on Saturday, but uh yeah, it's gonna be competitive, but he's entered. Raja's one of the entries, so if he makes the main event, that's gonna be impressive with how many entries there are. But yeah, so yeah, Raja, solid run in the points. Oh, Max see. Gutierrez. Uh, yep. The winner at the racing family. Juan Newsomberta in brilliant <laughs> fashion. He yeah. only led that was the only lap he led the entire season was that race where he won. Yeah. What a absolute 
drive yeah. by next Gutierrez, and I can't wait to yeah. see uh, if they bring it back to the future. And Joey East rounded out the top five. Mason Diaz was in the championship hunt until an uh, unfortunate uh-huh. last few races, threw yeah. down a six. Parker Retzloff, seven. Taylor Gray would have been in this championship battle and four but, for an injury sustained off yeah. the track. Ty yeah. Gibbs, ninth. By the way, Zachary <laughs> starting finish 1.0. <laughs> he won all the races he entered, and, he, he, and yeah. Stephanie Moyer rounded out the top ten. Yeah. So <laughs> there you go. And of course, Coy Gibbs brings Joe Gibbs Racing yep. Yep. the third owners championship. Yeah, it, the car ends up being the eighteen because Ty Gibbs ran the eighteen for some East races. That's listed the eighty-one, but yeah, Coy Gibbs brought it over uh, the second place because I know that Daniel Dye got. Second in points, but it's not Maurice Gallagher Jr. That second in owner points just because of... Remember, Daniel Dye started the season in the 43 for Ben Kennedy. Remember when uh, they announced Jack Wood would go run... You know, remember they announced... The truck series. Yeah. So they put Daniel Dye in the 21 car for GMS. So Yeah, but, Max Eagle. So, yeah, Roger Cruz's yeah, car. Right? Yeah, second number the, six. Uh, yeah. Honors championship. And then, of course, Reddy Jones racing number 30, Mark Reddy. And then David yeah. Gillen's 54 car, fourth in. Yeah. Murray Benevito Visconti. Number Visconti racing. Rounded yeah. out the top five. Yep. So, it was a good championship. I saw some of the races. It was interesting, that East uh, championship. See if they had any awards listed for... Uh, I guess they didn't have that page open yet, but yeah, yes. it was it was a great East Series yeah. season that a lot yeah. of people seem to overlook because of Sammy Smith's performance. But uh, Sammy you know, Smith, I hope they sign him again. He, he, yeah. He's got a lot of years down the road for a race car driver. Yeah. Yep, All and right. the, the current main now, Arca let's Series. Let's talk though. about that because the Arca Series now it's yeah, of course 16. already down to two drivers, sixteen points. At 26. Oh, 26 points. Nine, 952 to 926, yes. Ty Gibbs leads the points because, yeah, there's two events left in the season. 952 points for Ty Gibbs. Corey Heim has dropped to 26 points back heading into Salem. Third place is Tad Moffitt. How many points Wait. do you need to make it a full race? It, you get 48 maximum in a race. And depending on the car count. But it all depends. Them, which yeah. might not be big. We're not expecting yeah. to have a large field like we had no. in Bristol. No, we're going to have more cars at Kansas than because that's it's a bigger a cup track. weekend. We're going to get yeah. more cars. Yeah, Salem, we're not. But, but, we, but we know that third place is third on back is out of contention. Tad Moffitt, 666 points. I know the number. 666. So but he's th- he's third. Uh, who's fourth? Ma- uh, not Max Eagle. I was supposed to say Minus Max one. Eagle. Yeah. Well, that's close for uh, P3 in the right. point. That might come down to the end, depending Ooh. on if they show for the next but, two races. But four, Brad Smith, I think he secured the fifth spot. Brad yeah, Smith. because Drew Dollar, he's not running all Larka races. He's focusing on truck races for KBM. So that's one thing. So you get a week off. They'll be back for Salem two weeks time for the penultimate race, and then yeah. of course Kansas Speedway will follow to the close Reese's. That season. Yeah, the Reese's 150. That was the last race on Fox Sports for ARCA this season. Mav TV broadcast the final two events of the season at Salem and Kansas. Right. So it's going to be interesting to we see. We have another championship belt. We have another one to talk about Ooh. just before we go. Yeah. On- uh, let's let's bring up the NASCAR Wheel of Modified Tour because it Ooh. is on. I thought, oh, if uh, you know, Justin Bonson had a bad race, oh. can't have another one. Well, even if he finished second, you can't finish second to anyone that is named. But, Patrick uh, Emmerling. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, Patrick Emmerling driving the 07 for his family team, or like it's owned by him. He won at Riverhead Raceway. Good performance for Patrick Emmerling. You know what? He did everything he needed to do to stay in this championship hunt. He led 85 laps um, of this 200 lap race. Now, that means he had to spend some time, you know, catching up. He started seventh, but he did everything he needs to do to keep this championship alive, pretty much. We'll come down uh, to the final race. Um, yeah. Justin Bonson, you did everything you needed to do to keep up and defend the title. It wasn't enough. Finished second, but hey, it could have been worse. Second is probably the best. Yeah. 
Roger Turbo shot a nice third place effort. Oops. Kyle Soper yeah. led 12 laps to bring it home fourth, and Eric Adele running out of the top five. Yeah. Uh, going out yeah. on the list, um, Dave Brigatti, a 50 year old veteran at yeah. the uh, track, who's one of the best oh, drivers yeah. racing yeah. locally there, led 44 laps after starting third, but was taken out in a crash yeah. on lap 103. Yeah, but but also people for but racing yeah. reference and updated, but Roger Turbush led laps in the race because. Roger Turbush, uh, not Roger Turbush, Tom Rogers Jr. I met in the 03. I have the res I Roger uh, Tom Rogers yeah, he started Jr. A pole. Yeah, he led 59 laps. He actually the racing reference forgot to add his laps in. So yeah, Tom Rogers Jr. from the pole led 59 laps, finished eighth, which I did not expect to see Tom Rogers Jr. on a pole again. There's until, a lot of local veterans yeah. there that that yeah. just run the modified race and do very yeah. well. So. Yeah, he hasn't started on the pole in years in the modified, but it was a good pole to see him uh, get a pole. And Kyle Soper, Roger Turbush, I know he sometimes doesn't do the best because sometimes his car is not the best, but they brought Roger Turbush a good car. Race. Yeah, good solid run driving for owner Pat Kennedy, Kyle Soper for Wayne Anderson. How about Andrew and Koyak, a top 10? Yeah. Yeah, last car in the lead lap, only 10 finished on the lead lap. It shows you how competitive yeah. these races are. Yeah. All right, let's continue on the championship. There's one race to go. We go back for a third Stafford. race at Stafford. Yep, finale. Uh, to conclude this year's 14 race uh, championship, Justin Bonsignor yep. has 16 points. He has 518 points, 16 above Patrick Ambling. Now, yeah. third on back is out of it. Ron yeah. Silk, yeah. I don't, he hasn't clinched third in the championship, yeah. but. Sure. Uh, he's doing a good job holding on to it. He's had a nice series of races leading up yeah. to those. 450 points for him. Kyle Bonsignor is in a fight to possibly take that away. 444 points. And Woody Pickett is yeah. fifth with 441 yeah. points. Well, so two drivers, one championship, one race. Yeah, yeah it's going to be really close to both of these. They're, they're, they've been both good this season. That's why they've been one and two so much. But a driver that could have got third or fourth in the points – was John McKennedy, but he had to miss him and uh, was it Anthony Nocella? They missed the race. They were running another event. So Mike Christopher Jr. He's he made his first ever start in the modified, driving the Tom Baldwin number seven, and also Craig Lutz drove the number eighty two, replacing Nocella. Which, the reason that we've not seen mighty mm, Craig Lutz racing recently, his team, owned by Russell Goodale, that team shut down. Not long ago, mid-season, they shut the team down. But, yeah, it's basically top two at this point, winning it, because you could get only 48 maximum points in a race. And... Yeah, um I think honestly, forty-eight points maximum in a race. So obviously, uh, with a sixteen-point deficit, it will come down to the final race. It might come down to the checkered flag. We've seen these championships yeah. before. Yeah, and Stafford is always an interesting track. Every time you see racing at Stafford, I like Stafford. All right. I've, yeah. All right. So let's. Uh, Let's cover one more race before we get into our race preview segment of the podcast, yeah. which was let's go from four to two wheels. Now the MotoGP champ, World Championship is actually coming close to its end, but you know what? This guy's on fire. Pekka Bagnaya again winning a Grand Prix. It took a while for us to be able to say that. Now we get to say it twice. He's done. He's done so many good things for Ducati right now. Um. And everybody in the Ducati Lenovo team should be proud of their driver. Back to back wins after knocking on the door, getting how many second place finishes this year? Uh, three. How many podiums this year? Four. We knew it was a matter of time. And once again, Pecco gets it done for Ducati. Second career win from the pole position. Now let's discuss the championship because now I think this is something to wake up a little bit for Fabio Quartararo. 
Maybe, maybe not. Probably not. We'll see. We only have four races to go after this, but let's let's break it down. So you got the pole position, won the race. Uh, Francesco Bagnaia takes the win. In home soil, yep. Italians got to hear the national anthem on the podium in uh, San Marino. Yeah. Um, second place went to Fabio Quartararo, who started third. Third place with the fastest lap was Ine- Bastianini, the Ducati. So Ducati first and third. Great for the Italian manufacturer. Fourth place, Mark Marquez in the Honda. Fifth place, Jack Miller, though it was physically crossed by Joan Mir, who was placed one position back for exceeding track limits on the final lap. So the high Suzuki rider was credited with six. How about the Espargaro brothers? Paul Espargaro for Honda and Aprilia's Alix Espargaro, seventh and eighth. Brad Bender, ninth, gets himself seven championship points, the highest KTM finisher. And Takaki Nakagami brings it home in the top ten. Mikel Piro, Juan Zarco, Maverick Vinales, doing some good things for Aprilia, getting them points. Stefan Bradl for Honda, and Alix Marquez picked up the final championship point in the 15th spot. So, what does the world championship look like after this? We're going into the break as they're about to take on um, the the other side of the Atlantic Ocean and race in Austin, Texas. Well, with 234 points, it's Fabio Quartararo still in the championship lead, but closing the gap is Francesco Bagnaia with 186 points. Never say never. We still have four races to go <clears throat> and four different kinds of tracks. Joao Mir in third with 167 points. Fourth place, Joan Zarco, 141 points and one point behind. Who's knocking on the door for that spot? Of course, it's fifth place, Jack Miller. Jack Miller is doing a great job staying in the points with the exception of three retirements. He is the, the, the label of consistency. All right, time for the Constructors' Championship. And it's nice to say that we got to see all six constructors with triple-digit points. Thanks to Aprilia's best runs yet all year long. Ducati, can they pull away with this Constructors' Championship? They have 275 points with four races to spare. With 262 points in second is Yamaha. They were leading for most of the time in the Constructors' Championship, but now Ducati's taking over. We'll have to see where this goes. Suzuki in third. They actually took over the third spot. With a great series of races, starting with Styria, Austria, Great Britain, um, Aragon, and San Marino. They take over third from KTM as they're in fourth now. With Not the best races since their last win, with, uh, which was in the uh, Austrian Grand Prix. So, yeah, since uh, Brad Bender's last win, they have definitely swiveled down a little bit. Honda, while they have a win, they're sitting in fifth at 148 points. And Aprilia finally breaks the triple-digit barrier with 105 points in six. I think they should be really excited with Maverick Vinales. A lot of people that say, oh, Vinales and Aprilia, that's just wait and see. We've seen them succeed before with the brand. Yeah. Now the team standings. It is This is very close, but it's really going to be down to two teams. Monster Energy Yamaha MotoGP has been caught by... Ducati Lenovo team. The gap is three points. 329 for Monster Energy Yamaha Helmo GP. And two point or and 326 points for Ducati Lenovo team, just three points. Because of course Ducati Lenovo team got two wins in the last few races. Third place, Team Suzuki X Star with 235 points. They're almost 100 points behind the championship leader. Fourth place, Pramac Racing, 216 points, and they're getting chased by Red Bull Kingston Factory Racing with 211 points. So we get a week off, um, one week off, then the, the week after, they will be racing at Circuit of the Americas for the Grand Prix of the Americas, the Americas Grand Prix, not to be confused with the U.S. Grand Prix. No, yeah, that's October 3rd. So and not... Yes, not this weekend, next weekend, the third. Right. Then it's uh, back to, um, I'm surprised I didn't have this race instead of before, you know. But maybe I guess they just needed the week off to have it right for logistics. But yeah, they go back to the same circuit where, they, where we ran this weekend at Misano for the 
Emilia Romagna Grand Prix on the 24th of October, then the penultimate race will be the Algarve Grand Prix on the 7th of November. And then on the 14th of November, to uh, close the championship, we'll have the Valencia Community Grand Prix. I just realized. Tormo. Well, yes. you did, with the championship, the penultimate race is on my birthday. The finale is on your birthday because <laughs> because my birthday is the week before yours, which is interesting. So that's interesting. But other than that, noticing that, yeah, it's going to be interesting in the final few races of MotoGP because I've been watching MotoGP recently. I watched it the other day. I watch it a lot. So, yeah. It was interesting watching that MotoGP event. Does Quadraro have something in his hands to, to be combating the answer right now? Or is, is uh, uh, I don't know because uh, <laughs> I record to Raro at one point. I thought he was going to pass Francesco Benaya. He was so close to pass him at points. I'm like, oh my gosh. At one point, he was closing so much, but other laps. He was not catching up too much. We'll see how this goes. It's going to be a great one for sure. But they get the week off and before traveling overseas. So now we can talk about everything that's about to happen for this race weekend. There's a lot of large sports. Uh, this is a busy one coming up. Uh, we'll also have a little special segment before we go. But you have the NASCAR Cup Series. Las Vegas 400 will be round 30 of 36. The first race in the round of 12, uh, race one of three. The NASCAR Xfinity Series will be racing alongside uh, for round 27 to 33, the first race of their playoffs, round of 12. And in the Truck Series, Las Vegas 200, round 19 and 22, just four races to go in their championship. First of three races in the round of eight. Then we have a lot of single senior racing to talk about. Formula One is back. We have the Russian Grand Prix, round 15 of 22 in the World Championship. Uh, probably Max Verstappen's biggest challenge yet, going to a track where nobody outside of Mercedes scored a win in the race's eighth year. Um, Formula Two will accompany that with the Sochi Autodrome round, uh, the six of eight race weekend. So, um, yeah, we'll see how that goes. We'll make our, you know, topics and discussions and you know debate all that and of course the indycar championship comes to an end the closing race the long beach grand prix a famous street circuit is back to round 16 of the 16 race tour we'll discuss our two sports car races uh, that, we'll, that we'll bring up including the imza grand prix of long beach which yeah. is the penultimate sprint race of the championship and yeah. the penultimate race of the nls vln series um the four hours of Nurburgring for round eight of nine will bring that discussion up. I don't know if there's going to be an acute uh, entry list for that. I don't know. Well, you know, I posted the M entry list. Yeah, we know yeah. that one. The only entry, there's a car that has a TPA driver, the 34. The 66 has uh, the 76 compass racing as two drivers to be confirmed. <laughs> Still, which is interesting. I'd be a few any car names. You never know. We've seen that before, especially in the history of the uh, sports car Grand Prix of Long Beach. Let's talk about the Cup Series race, Las Vegas 400. Let's look at the history of this event. So, this year, of course, we got Kyle Larson take the win. Last year, it was Kurt Busch. He won in front of a home... Uh, I wish it was home crowd. It was empty, but he won at home for the first time after 20 years. Um, yeah. But of course, we'll have the home crowd probably at full capacity this year. First race was won by Mark Martin in 1998. And who has the yeah. most wins? Well, Jimmy Johnson, four wins. But that could be tied by Brad Keselowski this weekend. He's got three wins. Matt Kenseth has three wins. Uh, yeah. Jeff Burton, Carl Edwards, Kevin Harvick, Joey Logano, and Martin Trucks Jr. share four wins. As far as the uh, fall race is concerned, three teams have won in the history of the fall race. Team Penske, Joe Gibbs Racing, and Chip Ganassi race. Now for the manufacturer wins in the fall, all three manufacturers active in the Cup Series have shared that one. Ford, Toyota, and Chevrolet. So, so this fall race at Las Vegas will have a little bit different conditions, but it's not that, not that far away from the conditions we saw around uh, well, it's round four of the season. Yeah. 
Except black, well, it's mostly, yeah, because, like, except it's at night instead of in the afternoon. But last year's race was on Sunday at the same time. So that's going to be the same conditions as last year, but but it's going to be interesting to see that two, that 267 lap event Sunday evening because them it's evening us it's more heading Race towards the day over there because you know yeah but yeah but but it doesn't matter I know some uh, fans are probably going to complain because uh, fans sometimes but I don't care when it is it's because the next day, on the Monday, I'm only working at 5 p.m. next um, Monday, next Monday, so I don't have to wake up early. After, like, the truck race, for example, I had to wake up early for working Friday morning. Other than that, yeah, 267 laps of uh, interesting racing. All right, we're going to make our picks, so we're going to make our pick to win. And if our pick to win is not currently in the championship, we're going to have uh, the highest championship finish. Okay. All right, I'll I'll start with you, Justin Newton. Okay. Who do you have for this one? Okay. My driver in all Vegas, he's competing in nine total events here. In, in nine events, he has zero, zero top fives, a zero wind, one top five, two top ten, six top twenties, five laps led, 16.8 average finish, 19.67 average start, five. Fifth is his best finish. He has one DNF here. An interesting stat. This driver, <clears throat> he's ahead. He's has the high he's the second highest average at his team. His uh <clears throat> he has a teammate that has the most wins this season. His two other teammates have lower average finish at this track. This driver drives car number 48. Alex Bowman's gonna win. At Las Vegas and punches ticket to the round of eight. He's good on these mile and a halfs. Every time you go to a mile and a half, don't count out that 48 car. He does have a better average finish than Elliott and Byron, which is impressive. Who's your pick, Joseph? I'm going to go with Kyle Larson. This is going to be another Kyle Larson race in 2021. And you know what? Everybody wanted to see, you know, he was under so much pressure going into the race, but he won at Vegas this year because everybody's like, okay, he's back in NASCAR. You know, he's got hundred cars out coming the car for most of the start of the year. Yeah. No. What's going to happen? And <laughs> how Kyle Larson get back? He got back to victory as soon as possible. It worked all on yeah. his favor. And now he's a fixture in this championship. Yeah. Uh, and when he when they when he won that first race at Las Vegas, everybody expected him to be around the outer half of the top ten in the championship. Now he's just yeah. as good as can be. So Kyle Larson's gonna win again. Okay. All right. So yeah, I guess that's gonna make our selections. Now let's move on to the Xfinity Series race at Las Vegas. Um let's talk about that event. So this year, AJ Allmendinger took the win, and last year it was Chase Briscoe. This is round 27 of 33, and the first of three races in the round of 12 for the playoffs. So the playoffs begin for the Xfinity Series for these 12 drivers. Uh, first race was held in 1997, won by the eventual champion Jeff Greed in 2000. Of course, he won it three years after that. Mark Martin has the most wins uh, with four. Uh, Jeff Burton, three wins. Chase Briscoe, Kyle Busch, and Kevin Harvick, two-time winners. Now, as for the fall race is concerned at Las Vegas Motor Speedway, uh, three different teams have won this event, including Chip Ganassi Racing, Richard Childress Racing, and Stuart Haas Racing. Last year, or um, I'm going this manufacturers, Chevrolet leads this with two wins, four to four wins. So, of course, it's a fairly new event. But where do we go with this? We after oh. we're still well. For me, this driver, he's not even a playoff driver, so I got to pick another driver after, but this driver, this driver, he's a part-time racer in the series, and he's ran a total of six starts here, two top 10s, four top 20s, wait, nine laps that he has a pole here a few years ago, average start 10.7, average finish of 15.33, this driver, he drives for a team that is their first season in this series. Driver of the number 31, 
Ty Dillon is going to get career win number two at Las Vegas. It's going to be a long way to second career, and it's been and also, so long. But also my driver, like, not for playoff, highest playoff driver, AJ yeah. Allmendinger. Yeah, Allmendinger is my highest playoff driver, but I think Ty Dillon's going to win. Okay, for this race, I am going Ooh. with AJ Allmendinger. He's going to sweep. Okay, that's quite We're simple. Just, uh, championship contenders do well in Vegas. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And I know the truck series fixtures are more familiar with this because it has always been, I mean, it was their own standalone race before the cup series joined their weekend for many years. So that's why, you know, the truck series guys might see it a little bit differently. Usually if the veterans are in the championship hunt. So let's talk about the trucks, 200 miles of Las Vegas round 19 and 23. It starts the round of eight, get a three races um, to determine the championship four. This year, we had John Hunter Nemechek take the win, and he's going to be in this championship. Last year, Austin Hill won, but will no longer be in this championship fight. First race was held in 1996. It was won by Jack Sprague. Uh, so, speaking of being the best, you got to be a championship to win. To win here, um, most wins. Well, Kyle Busch leads it when he got three wins at his home track. Austin Hill, Mike Skinner, Jack Sprague share two wins. That's where the fall race for most team wins. It's a Tory Racing Enterprise with two over Thor Sport Racing with one. Uh, two over one for Toyota and Ford for the manufacturers in the fall race. So I think the series might have a lot of non playoff drivers that could be in this mix, but I don't think it was going to be the case. What do you say about this, Justin? Who's going to come out on top? Okay. My driver. Okay. This is going to be a bold pick. So this driver is non-playoff, so I got to pick someone else to be good. Of course, Justin. This driver, he's ran three total starts here. One top five, two top tens, three top twenties, an average shirt of sixteen, an average finish of seven point six seven. He's kind of struggled this year. He's in his second full-time season. Driving the number 15, Tanner Gray is going to get career win number one at Las Vegas. He's good here. He's an average finish of 7.6. So, And my highest playoff driver is Zane Smith. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going really bold right now. Who's your pick, Joseph? Wow. Uh, for my pick, I think this is going to be in the hands of another sweep. John Hunter Nemechek is going to win. Okay. He's going to go for it and just take the win. He's going to dominate. He's going to show Sheldon Creed, hey, don't forget about me. I'm right here. Mike, you want to win the? You want to win your second Kentucky championship? You got to come through me. It's going to be like that. Well, let's get into some F1. We have a lot of single seater racing to talk about. Uh, this is. Let's bring up F1, shall we? Russian Grand Prix this weekend. At the Sochi Autodrome, which was Autodrome, which was created in promotion of the city after the 2014 Winter Olympic Games that were held there. Yeah. So F1 got their first race in the Russian Grand Prix. Yeah. 2014. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There's not that was won by Lewis Hamilton. Oh, I see it was probably Botas who got the win. So, of course. Yeah, all constructor wins. <laughs> Mercedes. Yeah, Mercedes has won every race here. Yep. It's kind of a Nico Rosberg one win for Rosberg in his championship season. Lewis Hamilton. Valley uh, Botas guy's first ever win in 2017. Then Hamilton. And, but, 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 uh, yeah, last year. Remember last year, yeah, because of Hamilton's penalties during the race, which was kind of confusing, but... <laughs> Sky was not going to stop talking about that. And also uh, the FIA with their... Uh, the FIA sometimes. They don't make too much sense sometimes because it's the FIA we're talking about. But other than that, Mercedes, it's their track. I know people i have been making weird predictions. Do you want to know what I've seen recently? What? There's been recently this trend. A Brit the British Grand Prix, British driver won. 
Dutch Grand Prix, Dutch driver won, part Italian driver, Ricardo won the Italian Grand Prix. People are thinking about Nikita Mazepin winning at home, but uh, I don't think that Haas car is too fast. But who, oh, oh. I got my driver. My pick, Lewis Hamilton, is going to get career win no number 100. I think <laughs> you're right. It's a like Merck, it's their track. Basically. I think Hamilton. There's Ooh. no better place for Hamilton to get his 100th win. But Russia. maybe at the U.S. Grand Prix, if not. But Russia, but, but. but it's going to be between Merck drivers. Merck is the only. Team but this is where Max Verstappen's going to have to work a little harder than he's been leading up to this. Yeah, like with just the with the non-successful past history of the Russian Grand Prix for teams outside of Mercedes. Yeah, yeah you got to get. Yeah. Get your game on, but do not let go of the rope on Sunday. Yeah. Yep, we have also we have the F two of. Well, bring that up. Yeah, Formula Two, the race at Sochi, which we only cover F two, not F three. I know F three is their finale. F three ends. There's a, there's a lot yeah, F three. Yeah, F three. They're ending their season at Sochi, but F two. There's still two more events after this at the. Uh, what's the name of that track? The new track. Uh, what is it? The Jedi, Jedi, Jedi street, street circuit. circuit, and then Abu Dhabi. But Formula Two, yeah, they're running their three events. Well, let's discuss Formula Three while we're at it. Yeah, yeah, Formula Two. They've it's they all have two uh, last year. Remember the sprint race did not end too long. Remember there was a crash with Jack yeah. Aitken and I Luca Vioto. I remember, but Formula Two. I know that people say, "Oh, Sochi's bad." F2 makes it better than the F1 cars. Like well, F2, yeah, respect racing. Yeah, F2, you can pass F1. It takes uh, <laughs> a long time to try to and get a pass. And force and yeah, all kinds of uh, yeah. mumbo-jumbo. But, but like, but F2, it's going to be interesting, I think. Uh, Let's look at the championship hunt. So, I mean, right now, I think we can really That's narrow correct. it between the top Three, yeah. If yeah. Dan Tickham has a good weekend, he mm. might be in the championship. The Opel oh. is gonna have to be almost yeah. perfect. Yeah, but Piastri, the point slater, he's just been impressive in his rookie season. I did not expect that. Then he got second place. Guan Yu Zhou, who's been close to a title so many times, he's P two in points. You got who's third? I think is Schwartzman. Yes, Robert Schwartzman, the hometown <laughs> driver. Yep, he's. He's Piastri's teammate and the number one. And then, yeah, Tictum, he needs to – Tictum and Porsche need to do something. They have to be perfect to catch up to the top two, three because right now, like, Oscar Piastri, he's been qualifying so good, not making mistakes, which is good for, for him. I feel like you know, this. It, it, it's it can go either way. I yeah. Like for me, for this weekend, for best driver finish, like average finish this weekend, like the person with the best average finish out of the weekend, I feel like it's gonna be the the points leader, Oscar Piastri. He's just been so good, like. Usually they say, "Oh, rookies don't do too good in your their debut season." Oscar Piastri is the points leader, which is just so impressive. He's doing this good in his rookie season. I think he's gonna have the best Ooh. average finish all weekend. Yeah, think? yeah, I think he is too. Because like Oscar Piastri, a thing that's helped him, he's so good in qualifying this season. He's qualified. Like, if you notice how the qualifying battle is, like, Piastri has so qualifies up front more than his teammate Schwartzman, which is helping Piastri be the better Prema driver, which is, like, Piastri's done been qualifying fast, practicing fast. He's just been on fire this season. He also, you know, Prema's always a contender in F2 and F3, like, Prima Power Team. They're just a strong team in this series. It's always tough to try to beat Prima. But other than that, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Formula right, 3. Let's talk some Formula 3 because we do have yeah. one. Or, this uh, is their change, final event. Uh, yep, they have their final event, which they have three, ra uh, three races in a weekend. The points leader, Dennis Hauger, for Prima, 
over Jack Dewan for Trident. It's, yeah, there. that's the current, uh, that, those are the top two in the points, which, it, what the original finale was supposed to be in the USA, but they decided to do at Russia. So the points right now, because they're, after the last event at Zanvort, it's 43. Hauger 193, doing 150. It's not clinched because, you know, three races. Like, what happens if, an example, Jack doing just so good, gets points in every race, and then Hauger gets no points. Basically, that's why it's not clinched. Because, but then, it's basically one and two, basically, at this point, because Clement Ovlak is 71 points back, third. Fourth place, Vector Marins is tied with Frederick Vesti, which... Vector Martins, who's in the MP, his first season in F3, he's been impressive. He's been the better, you know, uh, MP motorsport entry. And then you got uh, Smolier, 107, Co Ollie Codwell, which is 101 points behind his teammate. And it's Logan Sargent, uh, wait, Kayo Collette Sargent, Logan Sargent, and then Arthur LeClaire, top 10. So it's basically top two at this point. Everybody on back. Yeah, Dennis Hogger, look, he's looking very good right now, but yeah, but but there's three races like, like look at round three. Dennis Hauger in total with all his poles and stuff, and pole and stuff, thirty one points in race three. That's the thing, like the most points I've seen that Doan's got in a weekend is twenty nine points at Spa. Hauger's got 31 twice. Barcelona race three and Zandvoort race three. He ended up getting 31 points. That was really helping. Some he gets more points in a weekend, which helps Hauger, but it's still it's gonna be close. But I feel like it's gonna be Dennis Hauger for Prema. Because that's good here, but let me the team's title for the teams, because the it is the teams is closer, 25 between Prema and Trident, which Prema has Leclerc, Codwell, and Dehauger, while Trident has uh, has Jack Dewan, Clement Novalock, and, and David Schumacher. Like, you got Trident. Yeah, it's basically top two because our Grand Prix is 119 points back in third, so it's basically top two for the con the team's championship. Which there's ten teams because there's three entries, thirty cars. So it's gonna be probably Dennis Hauger getting the championship and probably Prema gonna get the the teams because it's hard to beat Prema in F three, I've realized. Like F two it's kinda of possible, but F three, trying to breed Prema is hard. Be basically the top two teams it's always between Prema and Trident for F for F three. So it's gonna be interesting to see what's gonna happen for the teams championship because it's closer, twenty five points. Like Prema can gain, could not get points in a race, and then Trident could get twenty five in the in race one to tie it up. Like that's how close it is for with three rounds in a weekend, three races in one weekend. Points shake up a lot. So they're running this weekend with F one and F two. So it's three open wheel series at the same track, which is going to be interesting racing this weekend. For I think it will. Yep. Yeah, we also have more open wheel racing with IndyCar. Yeah, and that's our next Whoa. top because IndyCar Ooh. is going to come down to the final race. Yep. The Long Beach Grand Prix. And let me tell you, this event is a classic. So let's look at the entire history of yep. the Long Beach Grand Prix. Of course, we didn't have one last year. Due to the pandemic, it's the yeah. 16th and final race of the championship. Last race was won by Alex Alexander Rossi yeah. um, in 2019. The first race was held in 1975. Brian Redman took the win in the Formula 5000 event. Now oh. the race afterwards became a Formula One uh, Grand oh, yeah, yeah. Prix. Yeah. Uh, going into the 80s, and of course, after 1983, it left the calendar, leaving um, IndyCar to take over. That's what they've done ever since. Um, 
So who has the most wins out of this? Al Unser Jr. with six. Uh, I did all the tallying. Al Unser Jr. with six. The Mario Andretti with four wins. The only driver who won both an F1 and IndyCar long gauge. Paul Tracy with four wins as well. Sebastian Bourdais, the winningest active driver on that list, with three wins. Alex Zanardi, Michael Andretti, Will Power, Mike Conway, and Alexander Rossi with two wins. Now who has the most wins by a team? Newman Haas Racing with seven. Team Pensy with six, as well as Gals uh, Cracker Racing Team, Chip Ganassi Racing, and Andretti Autosport. Ferrari, McLaren, and Forsyth. Or McLaren, Ferrari has three wins, and then McLaren and Forsyth Racing, two wins. Now, for most wins by a manufacturer, 18 go to Honda. Ironically, this race was a long time sponsored by Toyota, which is kind of funny. But they're now, rivals. Yeah, but now it's Acura is the sponsor right. of the track. Of, not the track, but the um, free. Pretty much under Honda. Yeah. Uh, 18 wins for Honda. 14 wins for um, Cosworth. 12 wins for Chevrolet. 9 wins from Ford Cosworth. 3 wins from Ferrari. 1 win for Ilmore and Mercedes-Benz AMG. Uh, so there are your numbers. This is a historic race, really, if you think about it. It doesn't get too much yeah. recognition for being a, a premier classic, but I think it should. Yeah. Um, so now that we said all that in the championship, of course, we got three drivers able to get it. Where, where does this go? Who, who do you guys think? think or it's just you or anybody in the live chat okay i got my pick for the win of the race Okay, my pick for the this driver. He's ran. He's ran a. He's in his career in IndyCar, or let me just check. Like this driver, he's uh, really successful. He he has a win this season. In this season, he's not full time. He, he's never won. I don't think he. I'm trying to look in his stats. I don't know. He never won this event, which is impressive. That I thought he would win is this event, but he's this driver. He's never won this event. Interesting. Part time. This okay. driver. This driver, in total, he's ran five events. He drives a Honda. Driver of the number O. Oh, oh, shit. He has won before. Elio Castro won in 2001 for Penske. Oh, I didn't go high enough. Wait. Right. 2001. Yes, it was. Oh. oh. It was Elio Castro Navis is your pick. Hopefully he's in the event. He should be. Because they said he is, hopefully. He's, he's, he's supposed to run full-time anyways next year. I think that should only be the case. I'll All just right. I'll just check to make sure. I know the entry list now, but uh, I'll just I check. They already on, announced it. He's going to finish the season. I'll, I'll, I'll check Wikipedia because Wikipedia. Yeah, uh, oh, we trust yeah Wikipedia. it says 14 to 16. Yeah, 14, 15. Yeah. So, yeah, my pick's Elio Castroneves in the number 06 for Myers get- Jank Racing. He's going to get a second win in a part-time season. Later. Yeah, and get a second win in a part-time season. Yeah. All right. How's that? Okay, I'm going to go with this driver uh, to close the season on a high note. Um, he's going to do something that hasn't been done since Sebastian Bourdais did it in 2005, 2006, and 2007. But he's going to do it again. Huh? Or he's gonna he's gonna do something that hasn't been done since Sebastian Bourdais win three in a row. Alexander Rossi will close the season on a high note uh-huh. and win his third Long Beach Grand Prix. Now let's yeah. talk about the championship. Who gets the championship? Three drivers, one trophy. I have Alice Palau. He's just been so good this season. I know it's a new track for him, but 
he's a he's he learns fast. He's a quick he's learner. Gotta learn fast for this one. But uh, he's just been so good this season. He's really been. I'm good. going Blau. I'm Alex going Blau. Will do it. Yeah, yeah, which would be impressive to see. Alex Palau, second career <laughs> season, second season in IndyCar. His first season at Ganassi wins the championship. He's just been so fast. Like he's he just stormed out of the gate with a win at Barber for his first career win. He's been so consistent. I know he had that engine failure. Other than that, he's been so consistent. Yeah, oh. I'm going to go with Plout. He's going to get the championship for Chip Ganassi Racing. Now, let me check to see how many titles that would be for uh, Ganassi. Let me just look real quick because I know he's won so many. So, yeah, championships for IndyCar. Uh, four plus nine. Thirteen championships for IndyCar. Oh, oh just – okay, seven, uh, seven for Detroit. It's tied. I was just checking because I was watching the Canadian election. Yeah, oh, yeah, that's something. But this is not well, political. No, it's it's not world politics media. It's world <laughs> racing media. It's not world hockey media here. It's all, but it's all about racing. There's also other an other event yes. taking and place at Long let, Beach. Work, yes, that's the Games of Grand Prix of Long Beach. I'm gonna uh, open that up as well. We have two races to go in the sprint uh, series. Yeah. Th actually, three races to go. All together, but let me talk about the history of this event. Um, the Grand Prix of Long Beach for around 10 to 12 as we got three races to go. Last race was held in 2019 with Action Express Racing Cadillac DPI, driven by uh, Joao Barsa and Philippe Albuquerque were the winners of that event. First race was won by Dorsey Schrader in 1990 in a Mercury Cougar. Uh, so, yeah, it was him in a Ford prepared car. Um, most wins at this event. Lucas Lore, German uh, sports car veteran, four wins, uh, overall wins, compared to Klaus Graf with three wins, his country mate, one went behind. In fact, they were a pair that have won three times. So three of Lure's four wins were with Klaus Graf in the overall bet. Um, with three wins, you have Ricky Taylor and Jordan Taylor. They got their three wins together in a row. Then Scott Pruitt. Simon Pagano, Joao Barbosa, and Philippe Albuquerque join that list for driver wins. Now, most wins by a constructor, five from General Motors, four from Honda Performance Development, three or two from Ford Motor Company, two from Riley, one from Nissan, Toyota Racing Development, Porsche, Audi, Lola, and Aston Martin Racing. Now, I know you have the entry list sent, so I'm going to go ahead and open that up. Yeah. And check out who yeah. will go for this outright win. Yep, 26. 2021. Yeah, 26 entries in total, 6 DPIs, 3 GTLMs, and 17 GT Daytona entries are entered again. Yeah, it's basically almost the same as Gucci's. Well, it's I'm almost... just going to go for the outright win. Okay, my pick in DPI is the number 10 Acura at the Kanaka Minolta Acura. ARX05 during my Rick Taylor and Philippe Alca uh, Albuquerque. Albuquerque. Yeah, and also, it's uh, ironic, the sponsor is the Acura Grand Prix of Long Beach. Acura sponsors the weekend, so, yeah. It's, it's General fit. Motors with five wins if they yeah. win it. It's, it's also fitting. Acura winning the Grand Prix. Yeah, I feel like the number 10, they're going to continue and the Ricky momentum. Taylor would tie Lucas Lohr with most wins at four if he yeah. does it. Who's your uh, pick? I'm going to take the same as yours. The number 10 win Taylor Racing, Conoc and Minolta, sponsored Acura ARX 05. Yeah. With Taylor, Ricky Taylor, and Philippe Albuquerque. It's just, they're, they're just so good. In yeah. race. Now, GT Le Mans, we have three LMGTs that are showing up. Once again, the two Corvettes in the WeatherTech Proton Porsche. Uh, yeah. Do you want to make this one? I have the number three Corvette Racing C8 Harger and my Antonio Garcia and and Jordan Taylor, the three. I know the four had no, the won the last race, but the number three has been just really good. Jordan this Taylor season. has won overall three times, so I'm yes. with you on that. Like, yeah, right. yeah, I'll, I, I, yeah. He's he has a uh, experience, so I feel like he's. I gonna... wish we had the same grids like the ELMS does with the LMGTs, but maybe we'll see more cars with the GT3s next year. We'll see. Speaking yeah. of GT3s, let's talk about GTA Tono real quick. 
Yeah, uh, seventeen of which. This is gonna be a good race. I know not all the, the entries are confirmed, but this, like the one driver in the thirty four GMG racing. That's a new team. Sim as the Ogara Motorsport entry. The Scuderia courses in this race. And Compass Racing, their drivers are... A lot of bronze, silver drivers, I know, are on this list as well. Yeah. Some platinum-level yeah. drivers. I mean, this yeah. is pretty much the AM class of everything, but we'll see. Who do you got for this? Okay, my pick here... My pick is the number 63, Scuderia Corsa Ferrari, driven by Colin Braun and Daniel Mancinelli. From a... T yeah. The number 63, Scuderia Corsa Ferrari, if that's my pick. Who's your pick? My pick is going to be... Oh, this is tough. I'm going to go with the 16, right? Motorsports Porsche 911 GT3R of Patrick Long and Trent Hinman. I think the veteran and Patrick Long will be very essential for driving around this track. And Trent Hinman is a very fast driver as well. So we'll have to see where this goes. And he's... He's adding up to the levels of his racing license, too. So keep an eye on it for the long-term yeah. future. All right. We can't really talk too much about the NLS VLN race as far as an immigrant because we don't have the entry list. It doesn't come out until, like, one or two days before the race. Yeah. Yeah, hundreds of cars, of course. So the drop box for the entry list usually comes out late. But there's two races to go there, so keep an eye out for that. All right. Now, I wanted to, before we end this podcast, I want to talk about one more series that announced – their end of the season, what it's going to look like. That's the NASCAR Pinty Series up north of the border. There's at least seven drivers mathematically eligible to win this championship. Yeah, there's um, going to be – yeah. There's going to be three races, one on Friday and two on Sunday at Delaware Speedway, which is the end of the – We have three races at Delaware. Two, I think they're all 125s. Yeah, all 125s, the the end of... Let's, let's talk about the drivers that are uh, mathematically able to win this championship. I'll just go through the entire top 10, but I believe it's just going to be the top 7 that are able to do because the last time there was a race, the winner got 48 points. Yeah. Uh, but I'll just list all. We have Alex Tagliani, a veteran. Sure. Luis Felipe Dumas, another veteran. Uh, Andrew Ranger, he's won oh. championships before. DJ Kennington, long-time veteran. Probably the oldest driver in the grid. Trenton Lapsovich, a rookie yeah. who is from a racing family. Yeah. Kevin Lacroix, who has seen flash of success here in Canadian stock car racing. Alex Gwinnett, Brett Taylor. So from Gwinnett on back, I think they're going to have to have absolute perfection. But you can't rely yeah. on seven misfortunes in three races. It's not going to work like that. Yeah. But it's going to be down to these drivers. Alex yeah. Tagliani, LP Dublin, Andrew Ranger, DJ Kennington, Trayton Lapsovich, Kevin Lacroix, and Alex Gwinnett. Yeah. They're all uh, within 44 points of each other. And there's yeah. three races. Yeah. All we can do is predict the champion. Who's going to be the 2021 NASCAR Pitchy Series champion? For me, I have Andrew Ranger. In the number 51. I think it might make sense. I mean, no He's, one has won more than once this year other than Rafael Assard. Yeah, and also... Who is going for the championship, that is. Yeah, but Andrew Ranger, he's been uh, solid. He, I know it's Rick Ware Racing, but it's not the Cup Series Rick Ware Racing where they're running in the back. This team has been really strong, and... Andrew Ranger has experience in the series. I mean, so he's I, won so three championships. Yeah, he drove. He used to drive for Jacobs Racing back in the day in the Ford. Drove for DJ Kennington's number twenty-seven entry. He decides to move to Rick Ware Racing. Rick Ware decides to feel a penny series team where it's where we're like, oh, that's not going to be a good idea. Rick Ware Racing, they're doing good with the Dodge because. Penny Series has dodges instead of, you know, instead of having, instead of having the uh, Toyota. It's not factory support. In no. fact, Dodge still supports yeah. the series. So. Yeah. So I feel like Andrew Ranger, who's your champion? Well, if Ranger's got to pick up 36 points, I'm going to go 
with a driver who has to pick up a little more points than that. It's someone who is such a decorated veteran who's been uh. in the series for such a long time before NASCAR even sanctioned it, uh, who has pretty much um, won the championship twice, but his last title was almost a decade ago. Oh. Someone who was always in the top three at the end of this championship. Yeah, you heard me right. I am going with DJ Kennington. DJ Kennington? Okay. I never knew that. DJ even... Kennington I... won two championships in this series. It's been a while. 2010 and 2012. And you know oh. what? Look at the finishes that he got in the top three that weren't hit championships. 20, uh, 2018, third. 2014, third. 2013, second. 2011, second. Oh, my. 2009 God. and 2007, second. 2008, oh. third. In the cast car national super series days. Oh my god. Third in 05, third in 03, second in 02, third in 99. Oh my. He could have been the Frank Kimmel of this series if luck actually went his way. But I think this year it will. So I'm going with the old guy. And I hope he I hope he wins the championship because Eugene Kennington will send a message to everybody that he's still relevant in the sport of stock car racing. Yeah. Yeah, and just yeah, and he's got forty eight points to make or forty three points to make up. That's tall yeah. order. Don't yeah, get me wrong. Yeah, and also people for other races. If you like late model races, there's one event. Just set and briefly mention that the Valley Star Credit Union three hundred, which is a big event at Martinsville for the series, they're running this weekend. It, they it was canceled due to the pandemic last year, but they have over seventy entries for thirty eight positions. Just to let you know if you like it, if you like short track racing, tune into Track Pass to see that on Saturday, which just letting you know if you like short track racing. And hopefully, there's no, hopefully there's no flip. Remember when Taylor Gray flipped there in 2019, which was not expected? Remember that, Joseph? We're watching yeah. the race. And you just saw the car on the – yeah, Taylor Gray ended up on his roof. Josh Berry won that race. He, he led all 300 laps. Yeah, but this year he's not in the event because he's... And that's a nice sigh relief, but you know, there's still a lot of drivers who could do <laughs> just that. And yep, want to because, because there's over 70 car, uh, seventy drivers for 38 many, where, positions. So 38, top 38 gets in the race. Yes, and then heat events and stuff. Uh, not heat events, but there's last chance qualifier races. To, uh, so, yeah. So that means... 32 DNQs, about 30 some Almost cars. Half the entries <laughs> are gonna be DNQs, but 38 late models, like for the main event, going around a track like that. Oh, I've watched this race once, which was the 2019 event. Like racing, like late models at Marinsville is even interesting. Now let's and remember 2018, of course, who was oh, that yeah. one? It was Timothy Peters. Yeah, to me, Peter. A lot of people seem to overlook him as a short truck late model driver. He's pretty good there too. All yeah. right, now who's gonna be, who's gonna win the NASCAR Wheel Modified Championship? Uh, before we go, I have Justin Bonsing or I have yeah, Patrick I... Emerling. Oh, okay, it's, it's gonna, gonna be... be a good one. It's gonna come down to this checkered flag. At, at, yeah, it's gonna come down to the checkered flag at Stafford because Bonsing is good here. Emerling's good here. They're both been good this season. It's been always so close between both. It's like, it's like you never know who's gonna be better than the other each week. So it's gonna be close between both Justin Bonsignor and Patrick Emerling for this modified championship. All right, I think that's uh, for our podcast. Uh, it's good, yep. you guys uh, checking in. We'll be back for episode one thirty. Whether it's on Monday, or Tuesday, we will let you know. For my partner, Justin Hiver and Daniel Ford, I'm Joe Saflandy Pablon signing off. See you next week.